Welcome to the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada's first video for intermediate collectors. Today's topic is going to be an introduction to Canadian stamp colors, and we're delighted to have Douglas Hill with us today to lead us through this very interesting topic. Um, Douglas returned to stamp collecting in 2020. He's a member of the Burlington Stamp Club, the West Toronto Stamp Club, and the RPSC. He collects Canadian carto philately, which is maps on stamps, covers, and panes. Um, and he also collects Canadian philatelic firsts, Canadian illustrated permits, and worldwide airmail labels. His side interests include Canadian stamp colors, the topic he's going to be speaking to us about today. So, Douglas, it's all yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. So, uh, I, I'm going to be talking about Canadian stamp colors, and I have title in color, and now those are the official colors of the rainbow, from red through to uh, violet. So, I just want to mention that our, our standard reference here is the Unitrade Canada catalog, which is the, the regarded as the Bible for uh, all kinds of Canadian stamp collectors. This catalog uses the Scott catalog numbers. It has all the information that Scott has in its catalog. It has the same names for colors that Scott has. That's important for today. Uh, and uh, this catalog, this Canadian Specialized, has many more varieties listed. So it's, it's the reference we all want to use. So here are Canadian stamps in the rainbow colors. The, uh, the scientific community has actually named the, the rainbow colors starting with red on the left, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Those are the official names for physics. And we have examples of each color. So this Canadian stamp is called red in the catalogs. The $1 orange uh, admiral is uh, officially orange. The next one is yellow. I'll talk about the strange color yellow in a second. There's a green one, a, a small queen is a green one. There's a blue, there's an indigo and a violet. And an, oh, pardon me, another example of all the colors of the rainbow is this stamp in the lower left here. It's, it's the last stamp from the 1981 set of four stamps showing the development of Canada. And the designer, Raymond Belmar, chose to arrange the colors in order of the rainbow. So we start with uh, red, orange, orange, yellow, uh, yellow, green, green, and so on. And then we start coming black, blue, indigo, and we go all the way back to Newfoundland and Labrador for violet. So that's another example of the rainbow. Uh, but of course, there are many more colors besides the rainbow. And here, here's, here is, oh, it's not working. I'm having trouble. Oh, there it is. I've now learned how to turn to the next step. So, uh, Here's some more color examples. The top left, the chocolate Corvette, uh, one of the ships built during the Second World War. The next one over is gray. The next one is ochre, and ochre, O-C-H-R-E, is an, an, a color name which I think only shows up for uh, in the world of stamps. Olive is a, a pretty shade on the right, and the bottom row, we have, just a second, I need to move my move my notes yeah but plum sepia ultramarine and vermilion so colors like ochre sepia and vermilion i've really only seen them in terms of snap collecting i talked about yellow being a strange color so the snap in the middle is said to be yellow according to the catalogs well i put on either side of the snap uh, some color samples, paint samples from uh, one of the local stores. So there's a light yellow on the right, there's a darker yellow on the left, and the darker yellow has a bit of orange in it, but I swear that the snap in the middle looks orange. Nevertheless, it's called yellow in our catalogs. Here are some of the earliest stamp colors. On the left, we have the first stamp with one color. It's the 1851 Three Penny Beaver. It's officially red, but I think it looks more like an orange red. In the middle, we've got the first Canadian stamp with two colors, the two princesses, with Princess Elizabeth, who became queen on the left. And the two colors are green and black. On the right, we have a famous 1898 two-cent map stamp. 
this one has three colors, black, blue, and carmine. So all of these were engraved. Uh, and they're all part of the first era. So I, I'm talking now about four eras in the Canadian stamp colors. And I've got my name at the end there. I think I'm the first person to, to make up this list of stamp colors. So the first era involves all stamps having a single named color. So uh, this era starts with number one in 1851. Then it goes all the way to number 355 in 1955. It contains 355 major catalog numbers and it covers 105 years. So almost all of these were a single color and almost all with two exceptions were engraved. So that was the very stable long period of the first phase in our colors. The second era in colors is where we have typically got one to three named colors. Uh, I'll show examples of these in a minute, but not, none of the steps in this period are called multicolored. And as again, they're almost all engraved. This period only lasts 13 years. The third era is the transition from the named colors to mostly multicolored. And the method of printing is mostly lithographed, but there are other examples. And this, pardon me, this period goes over the next 18 years, and I'll show examples from that. And finally, we're now in the current period, the fourth era. Over 90% of commemoratives and over 70% of definitives are multicolored stamps. So let's look at some examples of these eras. The first color era, more than 100 years. Here are single colors. These are all engraved and they're all single colors. From the two cent jubilee on the left up to the 50 cent church and the $1 ferry all the way over to my favorite stamp there, the moose. I think that moose has great character. So these are all the first era and they're all engraved. The second color era, from 55 to 67 is where the coloring goes back and forth between one named color or two named colors or three named colors. And examples of the one color, there's 82 examples in here of the one color, here are some of these. This one has a stain down the middle. This is the centennial stamp and the stain down the middle is the Winnipeg one bar tagging. That's, uh, it shows up as a stain in, in regular light. The second row is examples of two colors all across there. There are 16 examples in this era where there are three colors that are named. And the one exception is that this stamp down here, the map, the meteorological map, has actually got four named colors. It's a bit of an exception. The color errors three and four are from 1967 to the present. So uh, starting here, we have a, a green definitive, a two color magenta and black definitive, some multicolored, and some more multicolored down here. And the uh, two on the left have the word multicolored, but look at what comes first. This stamp starts off naming the bistra, the uh, orange color that dominates, and then it says and multicolored. But when you go to this stamp, they put the word multicolored first, and then the the dominant color blue is in brackets. So they have two ways of, of naming combinations of uh, single colors and multicolors. Now the universal, UPU is the Universal Postal Union. Every uh, country belongs to it and it coordinates the uh, delivery of other countries mail in Canada and the delivery of our mail in those other countries. So you have to join to, to get your international mail going. And they, they set up agreed rates between countries and agreed colors for the stamps. And they went all the way from 1897 to 1952 when they uh, gave up on this requirement. And here are the requirements. So for example, a letter, the weight of a letter was only half an ounce up to 1907 and it was one ounce after that. One ounce is uh, currently the same as our 30 grams. It was a double weight letter. Postcards, they did not specify what the weight was and printed matter, they, the price of the stamp is for two ounces of printed matter. So in 1897, they said that the letter should have a five cent blue, excuse me. Uh, so they're specifying both the five cents and the color blue for the stamp. 
For the double weight letter, they specify 10 cents, but they do not specify any color. You can use any color you want, and we'll see an example of that. For the postcard, they said it should be two cents and the stamp should be red. Printed matter for two ounces of printed matter, it should be a one cent green. So that was the first definition. Then as time went on, the denominations changed, but the colors, the color blue, 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 and blue down the side, down the column here remained the same, although the denominations changed. See, uh, so it was five cents to mail something, then it was 10 cent to mail a first class letter, and then the price went down to eight cent and finally down to five cent. So in each below each date, 1897, from 1897 to 1921, I list some of the common sets of stamps that Canada had, which illustrate these, which follow these color requirements. So in this list, there's Edward VII, Quebec Tercentenary, and the early admirals are all conforming to these prices and these colors. I put Edward VII in red because I'm gonna sh show those stamps as an example of, of how we, match the color scheme. And finally, at the bottom, I'm gonna show the George V medallions, which also follow the color scheme. So here are the examples, the first set of examples, the Edward VII stamps follow the color scheme and the George V medallions also follow the color scheme. So the letter has to be five cent blue it is, and again, it's five cent blue. The double weight letter, they specify 10 cents, but they don't specify the color. We chose brown lilac. They specify eight cents, but they don't specify the color. And we chose red orange. <coughs> Similarly, the postcard conforms here and here, and the printed matter conforms here and here. So Canada did conform to the UPU color requirements. And that's why our colors are so consistent over all those years. But as, as I said, this requirement ended in 1952. So how do we name the colors? How do we classify them? And there are two kinds of color guides. On the left, we have the first approach to colors. And in this case, there are color guides, printed color guides for specific sets. These are all for the older sets. So four older sets up to the admirals have their own color guides. And this is an example, the color guide, one of the color guides for the admirals. The newer stamps are described by this generic color guide, such as this one. This is the Stanley Gibbons stamp color key. And you see it consists of, uh, I fanned it out here. There are, I think it's, uh, yeah, 25 different lines of colors. And there are eight colors on each line. So 25 times eight is 200. There are 200 different colors available here. And this is an example down here in the right. This is an example of one of those many uh, strips of eight colors. Now let's go back and look at the older stamps. We're gonna look at the admirals to, to learn more about how they classified the colors. The George V Admiral issues. They issued billions of stamps over the time period 1911 to 1926. The printings were done in Montreal or Ottawa. The printings were said to be the wet format or the dry format. And the issues were stamps, coils, booklet, and more tax. The Unitrade Canada listing for the admirals is over 26 pages long. There are 11 denominations, 18 major catalog numbers, and 14 different color names but the color varieties are numerous. There are 52 different color varieties in that, in the Unitrade Canada catalog, and specialists uh, uh, have uh, noticed uh, more subdivisions in these colors. Now, this is one of the oldest sets. So the important point here is that this issue, the Admirals, it was printed before there were any generic color guides. So the color names were not standardized at this point. So I mentioned, I showed on the left, the example of Randall Van Summeren's color guide. There are three custom color guides for the Admiral issues. The, the 2018 color guide by Van Summeren, I will talk about. And there's an earlier one by Richard Morris who did color guides for other issues. And there's an earliest one by Hans Reiki, another Admiral's collector. How many names did they dream up for the one cent green admiral? So the one cent green admiral, they dreamed up all these, they dreamed up 12 different names for different shades of blue, blue green, blueish green, dark green, dark yellow green, and so on. 
and Van Sommeren, this, these are these V's are our check marks. So Van Sommeren uh, includes almost all of the names in his list. Unitate Canada only lists seven. Stanley Gibbons lists five, and the Stanley Gibbons 200 color key, which we will get into in a minute, uh, only has seven of these named colors. There's one more thing that Van Sommeren found, and that was that he 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 thinks that the colors can be grouped into three different groupings. So that these are the names in red. So there's a blue-green grouping I will show you, followed by a gray-green grouping of colors, followed by a yellow-green grouping of colors. Here are the groupings. The, the, the top row here are all thought to belong to the blue-green family. The middle row are all thought to belong to the yellow-green family. I hope you can see they look more yellow. And the ones at the bottom look more gray, and they are all put in the gray-green color family. So you can take many different color names and group them, and I think it's quite sensible to group them into families. So that's what the, this one author has done for the admirals. So that's what you have. You have specific color guides for all the, not all of, but for four or five of the major older issues, but for all the newer stamps, we now want to switch to the generic color guide. So this is the first one by Stanley Gibbons. Uh, it's a Stanley Gibbons color guide. It, it lists 100 colors. So I'm, I am abbreviating this to say this is the SG100 color guide. It, it came out in the 1970s. This is what it looks like when it's closed up. And on the right here, we're showing two thirds of the panes. There's one more pane that I'm not showing. These are panes showing all the colors. It has the disadvantage that if you want to compare one of these colors to a stamp in an album, you can't put this color right. You can't put this color right beside the stamp in the album. There's no way to do it without taking the stamp out of the album. So it's not so good for making comparisons. And Stanley Gibbons decided that 100 colors weren't enough, so they they decided to double it. The Stanley Gibbons color key covers 200 colors. The first version of this came out in 1979. And I think I'm showing this picture here, I'm thinking showing is the second version, 1986. I want to point out that these 200 colors include all of the 100 colors on the SG100 color samples. And on the right, I'm showing two of the strips of colors. And so th this was scanned on top of a black background. So this is in fact a hole in, in this color, the cinnamon color. So if you think a color on a stamp is cinnamon, you place this color right on top of it. And in the center, you see the color you're comparing it to, and you can get a very good comparison of colors. And this works for stamps that are already in the album. And finally, there's a third popular color gauge called the Wonder Color Gauge. It's an American invention. It has 140 colors, and so I'm saying, well, that's the W140 color guide. But are the colors on these color guides all the same as each other? I don't think so. So we're going to compare them. Top right, the Stanley Gibbons 100 shows this. This is These are all claimed to be green. Stanley Gibbons 100 says this is green, and you notice it's a very smooth color. The Stanley Gibbons 200 color guide on the left here says that this is green, but it looks more motley and it doesn't look the same shade. And finally, the uh, Wonder Guide Wonder 140 is shown at the bottom. You can see the three colors are, are similar, but certainly not the same. Now, the colors might, the color you see might depend on, on what light you're using, but I'm using the identical light source for all three of these. I'm using my scanner. So the light source is the same, and this is what the samples look like. And I'm now going to show you two more examples where we compare all three color guides. On the left, we have the Carmen color. Stanley Gibbons 100 Carmen, Stanley Gibbons 200 Carmen, and the Wonder Carmen. The, the Wonder did a, a good thing with their color guide. They, they give a tinting effect. So on the left of this one is the uh, more dense Carmen, the darker Carmen, and on the right is the more faint Carmen, which helps you uh, match it up to some of the snaps you're looking at. And finally, on the right, we have the violet. 
one violet, not the same as the second one, not the same as the third one. So the, the color guides agree roughly, but not very closely. And when you find out how they're naming colors in the, the actual colors of Canada, you'll find the same thing that uh, what they call violet, for example, might, might look close to, but not the same as any of these. I mentioned all the color varieties in the admirals, but now when we look at a modern stamp, modern set of stamps, the centennial definitives, there are huge numbers of these. Let me go over this. There are many catalog varieties based on six different tagging options, two different gum types, dextrin and PBA. I'm gonna show these stamps in a minute, by the way, I'm just uh, giving all the statistics. At least seven different paper brightnesses, uh, not fluorescent, lightly fluorescent and so forth. Two different printers, the Canada banknote or the British American banknote. Occasionally, there are two different printing dies, and there's some constant errors, and all of these are listed in the catalogs. Based on this, the Unitrade catalog lists 142 catalog numbers uh, for the stamps, not counting coils, booklets, and so on. But there are no catalog varieties based on color, and that's because modern printing, even over different papers, different printers, and over a different time span of seven years here, modern printing can faithfully reproduce any color. So thank heavens for that. So here are the 67 centennial definitives. I've taken these images. I'm crediting the Unitrade Canada catalog because that's where I got the images. These are the higher value definitives over here. This is a pretty set. And by the way, this has been much studied. There's a, a 500 page book uh, discussing these stamps in extreme detail. And on the right, we have the centennial definitives, low values. There are 16 different stamps, but only 13 colors. There's a brown one set right here, for example. The dull purple is used twice on the three set and the 15 set. There's the dull purple there and there. Carmen Rose is used twice, the four set and the $1. And the third one that's used twice is slate green, the seven set, and the 25 cent. So are, they, are the colors consistent? I'm gonna give just one example. Here's the 15 cent dull purple centennial. The uh, handwriting there, 463i is the Scott number. The old numbers was uh, 121 was the, old, was the number in the old Hansen catalogs. And I was using the Hansen catalog when I collected these stamps. But you can see, so this one is, uh, the, the code here says, this is the dull paper, gum Arabic, and no tagging. This is the high bright paper, gum Arabic, no tagging. And then there's tagging along the PVA gum and tagging along the bottom. But the different stamps all look like they do indeed have the same color. So modern printing methods are pretty good and stamp colors are limited. I mentioned that almost all the colors that listed in the Unitrade are the same as the colors listed in Scott. There's only a few examples that are different, but the spelling is different. Scott says it's, the word Scott says color. Unitrade says color. By the way, Unitrade uses Canadian spelling, which is the same as British spelling. And uh, I would like to point out that this is now back to the King's English because we now have King Charles. Scott says Beaster, we say Bistra. Scott says ochre, we say ochre spelled differently. They say gray with an A, we say gray with an E. Their vermilion has two L's, our vermilion has one L. But that's all right, we can, we're can. we still speaking English, we can uh, talk to each other. So Unitrade has color listings. They have not introduced any new colors after 1985. They use a total of 168 different colors. And this includes the 52 colors for the admirals. And there's also 45 different colors for the small queens, another large set of older stamps. But 48 of our 168 colors are not found in either of the, the generic color and any of the generic color guides. So for example, none of the generic color guides contain the, the color brown carmine, crimson rose, rose violet, or yellow beastern. That's the way it is when it comes to colors. Now we're getting into a different topic, color changelings. These are stamps that were printed in one color and have gradually changed color over time. And I'll show you some examples. The cause of the color change 
can be browning from exposure to airborne sulfur compounds. The sulfur comp airborne sulfur compounds are what gives us the so-called acid rain, uh, namely sulfuric acid is in the atmosphere. But this sort of color, this color change can be reversed by cleaning the discolored stamp in hydrogen peroxide. And I will show you an example of how that works. You can have color changes due to prolonged exposure to sunlight. This might be sunlight every day for uh, six months or a year. This sort of color change thing cannot be reversed. And there are other kinds of aging. So let's look at some color change things. I want to thank Garfield Porch for giving me these stamps. He, he specializes in the, in the queen, small queens. So on the left is the three cent orange small queen. That is the orange color it was printed in. That's how it came from the printer. But over time, due to exposure to the atmosphere, many of the steps turn brown. That's one example of a color changeling. This is the most interesting example of a color changeling. The 1898 map snap has varieties known as muddy water. So you can see in this step that the waters which should be light blue or lavender are showing a gold color. And the snap down here, the U snap down here, the waters have become quite muddy. And this is the ca caused by the sulfur components in the atmosphere. These muddy water varieties are listed in one old catalog by Darnell. They listed as a variety, and I think that's because they had some in stock and they wanted to sell them uh, in the hopes that uh, if it's in the catalog, you'll want to buy it. But these are these don't deserve a color, they don't deserve a catalog number because they're uh, they're not as they came from the printer. So here's what we did. The lower left stamp was left in 20 minutes of a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide. And after 20 minutes of cleaning, it became the right-hand stamp. You can confirm that the two stamps are the same except for the cleaning because the cancellation is clearly the same on both of them. The 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide is how you buy it at the drugstore. So there's, you don't need to know any chemistry. You go to the drugstore, buy a bottle of hydrogen peroxide and use it. I'd also like to mention that after 10 minutes in hydrogen peroxide, most of the brown was off, but I waited another 10 minutes to make it completely clean. And you can see that the lavender color of the ocean has been restored in the stamp. So we're cleaning off the mud and doing no damage to the stamp, and that's a nice result. Here's an example of an admiral. Van Summeren wrote the book on the admiral colors, and he said any one set admiral that is blue instead of green is a color changeling. He did not say what the cause of the changeling was, and I don't know, but I'm sure some of you might. Here's another feature of colors, the so-called missing color. This slide is courtesy of my friend Arnie Jansen. So on the left, we have the regular stamp. It's number 503. And the black printing is here, and the black print, the black color for the printing also affected the color here because the black is missing. So the the black here makes this hair look different than the hair here. So the black color is missing from the whole snap, not just down here where the text is. This is a variety. When you have a variety like this, you might want to send it to an expert committee to give have them give an opinion as to whether or not this is a genuine variety. And so Arnie Jansen did. He sent this stamp with black omitted to the American Philatelic Society Expert Committee, and they gave him a certificate saying that the stamp on the right is genuine in all respects. So this stamp came from the printer without the text printing black. Unitrade Canada has about 50 listed cases of a missing color. Only a minority of the 50 are listed as a catalog variety. The majority are just listed in footnotes. And most of these color varieties are known in very small quantities, and they are therefore priced at $300 or maybe a lot more. You can see more colors if you put a UV light on some of the modern steps. So I did that, and I'll, as I show you the colors, I want to say that the names I chose for these colors came from the Stanley Gibbons 200 color key. This is the $10 whale stamp. It's a close up. This is the back of the whale right here. And under Room light, you do not see this image at all. Under the UV, you see the image of the scuba diver uh, because 
supposedly the whale is underwater. And I looked at that color and decided that that color in the, in the color key is known as turquoise green. Lower left, we have a bright yellow green color for the whole paper, the whole stamp. In the middle here, we've got, so here are two stamps. The UV light is showing the picture frame. This picture frame here is the tagging of the two stamps. And this is a souvenir sheet from the two stamps. So you've got the, the two stamps plus the artwork all, all around it and the text all around it. And the UV shows this image here in rows. This is a parent and child holding hands, looking up at the night sky. On the right hand side, we've got one more hidden image. This is a, a ship at uh, landing at Quebec City, and, and they've added the historical anachronism. They put in pink here, they've put the Chateau Frontenac on top of, of the hill. But uh, and when the ship arrived, there was no Chateau Frontenac. So that's what I wanted to say. There are errors in Canadian stamp colors. The UPU color requirements were in effect from 1897 to 1952, and Canada did conform. I did a comparison of the three different color guides. The colors are similar, but not identical. I showed how the older sets, such as the Admirals, have many color varieties, and they have their own color guide. The newer sets, such as the Centennials, have no color varieties, and their colors are listed in the color guides. And we mentioned some of the interesting color changelings. I talked about approximately 50 different stamps with missing colors. If you find one, that's a, a nice item to get. And we looked at the colors under ultraviolet. And now I wanna finish with a couple of notes here. First of all, if you're enjoying this series of videos, please like it, like us on YouTube and follow the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada YouTube channel. Let us know if there's a topic you would like us to cover by contacting us at talks at rpsc.org. And my final slide, I invite you to visit the RPSC website. And there's the uh, URL for the website. And if you want to contact me, I'd be happy to hear from you. I may be reached at my email, dahill3973 at rogers.com. And that is all I have to say. Thanks, Douglas. That was a very, uh, very, very interesting presentation. And I uh, appreciate you taking the time to, to do this for us. Um, we're going to be posting more of these intermediate level videos on our YouTube channel in the coming months. And we hope you'll come back to uh, have a look at them and that you'll enjoy them. Uh, as always, we're happy to hear from you if there's anything you'd like to uh, share or suggest. And uh, thanks again, Douglas, for doing such an amazing job. You're welcome.